Hey, all, this is Isaiah Stanback. Big Nate Newton and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for their sponsorship of this week's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. In case you're not familiar with Niagara, they're the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products, products that save real money, like Niagara's stealth technology toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara also works with affordable housing projects and commercial multi-unit properties to save water usage in dollars where it's needed the most. So, if you want to conserve water and save money, check out NiagaraCorp.com. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stanback back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. And I am here with no other than my big dog, Big Nate Dog. How you doing, family? I'm doing good. I'm you good? good. Hey, hey, he, we going to roll that first with no, you. No, yeah, we going to roll nah, that first I had a little man. hiccup, y'all, so we had to run it back <laughs> like Carl Jackson. Hey, uh, hey can I say this right quick? Like, what you got? Last week, we did something for Niagara. Yeah. And uh, thank y'all, man. Yeah, That's yeah, Niagara that was plumbing. Good. Yeah, where they where they say you water through the toilet. Listen up, man. Yeah. yeah. My, my wife's been on me about getting some new toilets. Now. Yeah. Yeah, she wants some new <laughs> toilets around the house. She said that our that they don't be flushing right, you right, know, and right. all that jazz. So with Niagara, we're gonna have to talk. Cause I, I need I got three bathrooms, I need three toilets. Man. Got three bathrooms, I need three toilets. And y'all, if y'all can save me some bread in the process, I I, I give you a hug. And the reason I need you, Niagara, because uh like every seven years, you know, being that you're a little bit over 300 pounds, they don't <laughs> last weird. long. So I need one of them heavy duty water savers. Yeah, all right? that's it. How often are you supposed to replace your toilets? That's a I don't good know. question. That's a question I we don't need know. to ask my friends over at Niagara. My guest one has been there for 15 years. I've never been replaced mine. But my one in the back, we don't replace twice. I've never yeah. replaced mine. Well, yeah, wow. I've been in my house since '07. Niagara, look at Niagara, him. How at you? I mean, you know, we yeah. can talk. You know, we can talk. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Anyways, um, Nate, dog, there was a smacking that went down this past week. You want to, you want to tell people who got smacked? <sighs> I, I don't even look at it that way, and I know you. You don't look at it like that. I don't Nate. even look at it that way. What you? How you look at it, Nate? You talking about the, the Cowboys? Okay. Uh, versus them Colts. Playing for one quarter. Against Saturday on so Sunday. So they, they scored Hold 30. Hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. I ain't about to let you breeze past this. Heck <laughs> <laughs> no. Heck to the no. If y'all remember, y'all need to run it back about four, five episodes, somewhere around there. There was a young man by the name of Nathaniel Newton Jr., that man right there. And he said that he was, that Jeff Saturday deserved to have that role. He does. He does deserve to be the head coach. But like you said, it ain't Saturdays he's playing on. It's Sundays he's playing on. And I agree. But did they quit on him? Yeah. Okay. They, they, they gave up the ghost, man. They quit. And Yes. And it's hard for me to say that by the NFL team because we, we've been there. Yeah. We've been on the losing end. Of, Absolutely. This is what it was 1920. It's a ball game. I, I'm, I'm sitting here saying, when do we crank it up? When, then all of a sudden, a turnover. Yep. And it, it and it's like the Snowball. faucet just blew yeah. off, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, well, they didn't have no Niagara. <laughs> they didn't have no Niagara. <laughs> they had the water savings. Yeah. And and I'm looking, and by the third turnover, I'm like, okay, game over. But I could not erase three quarters. Okay. Of st- why? Why do you play down or why do you sleep? Okay. Which one is it? Yeah. I, Which one is it? They, they, were they, they sleep or were they playing down to their competition? They were playing down to their competition. They have. Can you say they did the same thing against Green Bay? Yeah, yes. Okay. And you, you can't do that. Yeah. You have to be building, especially in December, towards the playoffs. If that's your true goal of getting in the playoffs, and, and winning in the playoffs, you have to have some type of consistency. Okay. You know, and yeah, you want tight games and you want uh, you want to struggle in some games, but not due to the fact that you're not being efficient. Okay. The Cowboys are not consistent. They're not being efficient in what they're doing. So, to me, yes, 33 points in one quarter, that's great. Yep. But what, you know, but what if you would have did that Throughout the game, scoring a couple of here, scoring a couple of there, 
shedding them down. Bro. Oh, man, that game could have been over. Uh, instead of having to play your starters the whole game, the middle of the third, you'd have been giving them young guys some experience. But Great. anyway, they won. Yep. And at the end of the day, that's what you're looking for, you know, to maintain your, uh, what, fifth seed at this point? Ooh. Ain't that a fifth seed? Yeah, they around there, Nate. Yeah, that, yeah, fifth there. seed. Now, that's, now, I'm glad you brought up the fifth seed because, oh, actually, before we even get there, before we get there. Uh, no, let's go ahead and go there. Yeah. Let's go ahead and go there. You brought the fifth seed. All right, now we're starting to talk about playoffs. Yeah. Okay, it's the time of the year, right? Well, four games left, whatever it is. They started to talk about playoffs. Brought something up on the Cowboys platform earlier. And I mentioned that Dallas against these, at least against the Texans. Right. Okay, Houston Texans, they're next up on the docket, okay? Right. One, 10, and one. That's their record. One, one, 10, and one. Do you look at, if you had to pick one of these three categories, would you rest your guys? Would you pull back your guys? Or would you play your guys? I'm running through folks. You're running through them. I'm running through folks. Okay. All right. Now, give, if I got give, a give guy me. with a bad knee, I mean a bad knee, a bad elbow, okay. uh, some type of bad joint, uh, uh, he's been, uh, this person's been had some a real bad soft tissue. Lingering tissues. issue, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that one or uh, maybe so, two so guys. So, D-Law, Michael Parsons, yeah. both of those guys have things that have been bothering them. Now, Parsons, you can't miss. Okay, I, give me the reason I'm why. I'm just being honest. Give me the reason why. Because with him off the field, now they can do, now they can double team D Law. We got 72 defensive ends. Tack McKinley hasn't even been called up yet. We had did we sign Tack McKinley at the beginning of the year or did we sign him at he they, they signed him a couple weeks ago. Okay. So <laughs> Tack McKinley was, was, was kind of floating. But he needs to get his feet wet. Uh, well, he can wet it somewhere else, but Michael <laughs> Parsons needs to be in the game. If some guys got, have to play because they are the they are the, the standard. So you're saying if you were Coach McCarthy right now. Where's the end game? Where do you want to be at the end of the year? I want to be at the end of the season. At the end of the season, I, I need I need twelve to thirteen wins. I need twelve to thirteen. Okay, wins. where do you need to be at the end of the football year, calendar year? And what do you? Say? What's the goal? What's the, my goal is to get into the second round for me. That's your show goal. That's okay. what you're saying. Right, but yeah. the organizational goal is to make it to the Super Bowl. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm just speaking. Just speaking. Yeah, yeah. That's every team's goal. That, okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. You got okay. me there. I can't so the say organizational that. goal, especially for Jerry, right? Yeah. He's trying to get to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl, right? right? Yes, sir. If you were to do that, are you? Do you have a chance at getting the number one seed in the NFC East in reality right now? No, you don't. Zero chance. Zero. Unless they just have a meltdown in Philadelphia. That's right. Okay. So slim to none. Do you get a first round bye? That's right. So from this day forward, there's a nine week sprint to the finish line. That's right. No rest. No rest. No rest. You wouldn't use a one ten and one team to get someone, some of your main guys, a little bit of rest when you have a nine week sprint head ahead of you. The reason I'm giving you my reason. No, I, I, that's what I want. Uh, who has shown you that they can they can line up and say we're going to beat this team from start to finish just because we can? They haven't done that. Okay. And 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 and, and you are speaking such great logic. Yeah. You're speaking such great logic. Yeah. It's hard for me to fight against yeah. it because I never took that side. Yeah. You know, that is great logic, but what if you lose? That's, because why, that's, that's why I asked the question, do you completely rest, rest some of your main guys? I'm talking about the Micahs of the yeah. world. The D-Laws it's really, it's really just world. Micah, D-Law, no. handful of those guys yeah. on the defensive front because you're so deep at that position. Right, right. right? And you know that that's your most right. dominant Position on right. the field, the defensive line, right? That's defensive right. end specifically, right? Right. So you have depth there. You got Sam Williams. You got some guys that that can step in and make some plays. You're right. not going to be. It's not going to be a huge void, right? Right. So I'm saying, knowing that and knowing that you're playing against an opponent that should not be able to match up against you, and should not dominate against you in that regard. Do you simply just don't activate you or don't play your guys? Don't suit them up that game, or do you play those guys the first half and say, hey, if you guys are up by three touchdowns after the first half. You get to chill the second half, right? But Or do you just play these guys all the way through? Because I look at it, how sick would guys be? You go out here and beat up on the Texans by 40 points, whatever it, whatever it might turn out being, okay? And you end up with one of your main guys hurt in that second half. Man, great logic. Great logic, but 
You see, I got to get old school out of my head. I hear you, yeah. I got to get old school It's, it's out different of my now. Head. It's yeah. different. Uh, I just believe this right here, and I've been saying it. They have not come out besides the Minnesota game. It just showed you who they could be. Okay. It's always been struggle, struggle, struggle. Okay, let's get going. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody want to applaud them. Hey, great second half. Great. You know, oh, way to go, way to go. And that could be the doom of you mm. in the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because you, besides the Minnesota game, you have not come out in, in, in process. Yeah. yeah. So, I, wow, I cannot get that thought out of my head now, man. That, yeah. That's 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 good stuff. It's something to think about. Yeah. It's something to stuff. think about. I know most people are in, in the same boat as you as, hey, you got to play these cats. But then you think about it, it's like, when do, when do, you, when do they get a chance to rest? I mean, a real, a real, because it's one thing to have a couple of days off, but it's another thing when you miss a whole game and now you don't have to turn that into two weeks rest. Now you get ready for a real big shellacking that you're going to have to deliver the week after. Yeah. In the next two weeks, really. Yeah. 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 Because the, it's about to be, this is about to be, your, your following two weeks are going to be the most physical ball you've played all year. Yes, sir. Aside from Detroit. Detroit was physical yeah. as all get out. But you know what's so funny is, the coaches may realize it, but let me tell you something, man. <laughs> let, let, me, let, me, let me say something. And I take that back. I'm wrong. Not the next two weeks, but the two weeks I, after that, right? Yeah, the 20, after the, this the game. The 24th we, yeah, and 29th. Yeah. This, this is what, and that'll be Ooh, that's a cool Philadelphia job, and Tennessee. Yeah. And Tennessee mad. They so mad, so they fired a the GM. They are, they are upset. They... They like, yo, what's number 11? <laughs> number 11 for Philly. Yep. He came in and. Yep, absolutely. Destroyed But him. anyway. Yeah. You got rid of this cat? You didn't want to resign him? This is what's amazing. And I had to go through this. And uh, you, you, you was like this at, at Washington. Okay. Where you were a physical dominant team. Yeah. We had to learn to be physical and dominant my first few years with the Cowboys. Okay. So every time we played a team, one thing they knew when they lined up, we we gonna have you we gonna make the Cowboys fill us. Yeah, the Cowboys do not; they take parts of the game yeah. and make you feel them. Yeah, but you don't feel them the They're whole all game. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> because did Minnesota lose the next week after they played the Cowboys? Because they didn't really feel them. Yeah. See. Yeah. We we if you go there back and there check, was no lingering effect yeah, after the game. You go back and you check the Cowboys. Yeah, when we played a good team, when they felt us, go back and check the record in that week. Nine times out of ten, they lost. Yeah, yeah, because we brought it. And what makes me mad, what makes me mad more than anything, is the 49ers and lost their starting quarterback twice. Twice. And people still talking about they can make it to the playoffs. <laughs> what does that tell you? That these boys yeah. ball. Yeah. Normally, when you say starting quarterback gone, oh, we gone. say, hey, season gone. Yep. Unless you got a Cooper Rush. You know, I, I was wrong on that. Okay. I was wrong on that. But anyway, I'm. Uh, no, I hear you, though. Yeah. But that's because they have an identity. Yes. Right, the organization has. They an play bully ball bully on both ball. sides. It of don't the ball. matter. They're like, it don't matter who's handing the ball off. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's what they say. Yeah, it don't yeah. matter who handed the ball. Who just handed the ball off? We make sure you crisp when you do instead it. Instead of throwing it to Debo and C Mac, we'll just hand it to him. Yeah, that's their uh, that's their identity. But yeah, okay. All right, so yeah, that, I just want to throw that question out there. Um, one of the things we I definitely want to hit on is injuries, and we you know Dallas Cowboys lost Anthony Brown. Now you're out. He had tore his Achilles, and I tore my Achilles. Barry Church tore his Achilles right. uh, during contract years, too, which is that's what it is for Anthony Brown. That's why I felt his pain. You can see it on his face. But that you're now down two of your three starters at the cornerback position. What do you do, Nate? How do you line up against the Philadelphia Eagles with two of your starters at the defensive back position gone? And there's no one out there. Nation Wright has not lived up to this third-round billing. This is, what, his second year? Mm -hmm. So he should have been getting, you know, 25 snaps a game He's minimum. inactive. Yes. And then uh, Kelvin. boss man Fat, 
better known as uh, Kelvin Joseph. Kelvin Joseph, you know, uh, he's getting you know baptized week in and week out, so he's learning. So what do you do, Deron Bland? He's 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 balling. learning, but he's 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 balling. Yeah. He is this guy we saw in training. Oh camp. yeah, he's same guy. Yeah, he is this guy who's learning yep. and and playing like a grown man. Yep. He's he's getting there, but. My question to you is, what you do? Do you go into a lot of zone now? Because that man-to-man thing could nope. be a punishing effect. You know what you do? What's you, that? You let them hounds up front go. And you walk your defensive backs up, and you say, Get, don't let these guys off the line of scrimmage. Don't let them off the line of scrimmage. Al Harris, start teaching them boys how to hold guys up for over those, those during those first five yards that's just illegal. You lock up. So, you so, stay in their hip pocket. You grab, matter of fact, you grab the inside of their pocket. Hold on a minute, man. We in Texas. Mm-hmm. We're not in Orlando, Florida at Walt Disney World. <laughs> We're not getting tickets to Fantasyland. Now, give me the real of what you're talking Mate, about. that's it. Give me the that's real. That's it. Your front seven has to dominate. I, I, I agree with that. It, so, by your front seven dominating, you don't allow teams to actually get down the field. That's, how, that's what has to happen. Because you're going to sit up there. You can't realistically sit up there and ask Kelvin Joseph and Nation Wright to all of a sudden just snap into it and have the same skill set of a Deron Bland and the impact of him right now. Can't ask it. So you don't, you, you don't mix in a little more zone? Uh, I don't like the zone. Okay. I don't Not like for zone this for this team. defense. Not okay. for this team. Because you want folks to get out I want them. I want, as soon as you go zone, you now don't have the mismatches up front. Okay. In terms of alignments and the rushes. Right. That the, I mean, these offensive linemen and running backs are having to decide who they want to block. Right. And that's why you're seeing so many sacks. Right, right. That's why you're seeing it said, you know, said, right. you know he's getting sacks. Um, you're right. seeing all kinds of guys get in there and get You're talking about Cedric Wilson. Cedric Wilson, yeah. Yeah. You're seeing these guys get Donovan sacks. Wilson, excuse me. Yeah, Donald. Donovan sorry, Wilson. my fault. My, my I, bad. I was talking Donovan about Miami Wilson. earlier yeah. today. Um, so there's guys that are getting sacks that typically wouldn't get it, but because of how Dan Quinn aligns his front and you're able to play man-to-man behind it, these guys are, are, are pre- simply just outmanning the, right. the front line. Wow. So that's, that's why I don't like zone for this team. And you think about the old Seattle defenses, they didn't play a lot of zone. They played That's man. Right. That's right. Right? And the front seven That's got right. after it. So That's his team, by the way. Seattle. That's Absolutely. who he That's hometown, man. Yeah. Hometown. That's what I read. It's always a, it's always right. an excuse for you not coming to the boys, but you know, it's okay. Seattle raised me, Dallas paid me. You know what I okay. mean? That's and that's who you <laughs> should be loyal to. <laughs> I'm loyal <laughs> like to Don Colliola said. I don't think well, yeah. I don't know. You Dallas might have to face Seattle in the playoffs. Ooh, that's going to be a tricky one right there. So how right. you going to work that week? I don't know. That's going to be crazy. <laughs> I'll have on some Seattle draws. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right, yeah, so they, they got a lot to overcome injury-wise. They have a lot to overcome. Prayers up for Anthony Brown. Uh, he, I Prayers up for him. Okay, he's going to be dealing with a lot mentally, a lot of uncertainty. He got hurt late in the season. It sucks to get hurt late in the season because I base it off of my rehab. From when I tore my Achilles, it took me six months. Took me six months to get right. So if you put him on that timeline, you're looking at June. Wow. June, July for him. Yeah. And then the way they do it these days, he but still no, won't get a chance to play in the games. With no contract, though. Yeah, no contract. But they like him. So it may be. So does he does he wait until he, does he wait until he gets healthy and shows people that he can still play, or does he sign sign something that's favorable for the Cowboys because, because they like him? It's a bad situation for him. Odell situation. Odell ain't going nowhere, Nate. Odell ain't going nowhere till next year. Oh, man. He ain't going nowhere till next year. I don't think he's – I told you I didn't think he was healthy, and here he is. Jerry be letting stuff out the bag, boy. Jerry don't be holding nothing. He let everybody well, not know. not if he can, can help him in his negotiations. Exactly. exactly. Not if he can help him in his negotiations. Yeah, exactly. He raised, wow. he raised everybody's eyebrows. All right. So, all right, we talked about the Cowboys. Now, I got a question for you. Yeah. There are a lot of people out there hating on your boy, man. Who is that? Your boy, your boy in Prime. Yeah. They hating on your boy Prime, man. Yeah. I don't know how much you want to go into it. I know I have my opinions you on it. You go wherever you want to go with Dion, because he, hey. That's your man. Teflon Don, baby. That's your Believe man's that. right there. Yes. He and can take his. Why are people mad that he is leaving Jackson State to go to Colorado? Because they they realize the people that's there in that state, as well as the people around the nation, they realize that it was him. Mm. See, you can go to Alabama, and Nick can leave Alabama, and they can bring in another coach with that kind of flavor. Yeah. 
and have success. Okay. Why is that? Because of the pool of players? Yeah, yeah the pool of players, uh-huh. the money that's behind it, okay. and the willingness to do it right. All right. Well, in the HBCs, and that's what I've always I, – one thing about me, I, I, I joke, I yeah. jive, and I laugh. But when you ask me a straight question, I Absolutely. give you a straight answer. Absolutely. Straight no so chase. Let, let me tell you something. What doesn't happen here is it finally dawned on you that it wasn't because Jackson State was the bomb. Mm. It wasn't because Florida A&M is the bomb or Grambling or South Carolina State. It took a face, but it also took a face that knew business. Mm. I'm not saying these uh, colleges don't know business, but on the scale of the way Dion does yeah. business, yeah. it is different. Okay. And they fail like most black colleges do in making it one. They don't make the university education and sports one. Bama is one. Clemson is one. Notre Dame, believe it or not, is one. It ain't one above the other. They tell you, you're not going to go to their education-wise. You're not going to go there to be a pharmacy and they not mention the fighting Irish. You're not going to go to the fighting Irish and they not say, hey, man, what do you want to major in? We know the pharmacy guy personally. Like when my son was in was at Texas, okay. coach found out that he was in, we wanted to get into communications, you know, a commercial communication, something to that effect. Yeah. Coach said, wow. He said, well, coach, yeah, I got it. You know, I'm trying to go to grad school. Coach made a call. It's one. Yeah. They, black colleges don't understand that. Hmm. And as long as you don't understand that, they do not realize when Nick Saban hooked up with Bama, they went from uh, uh, being full on the student side. Now, I'm not talking about the stadium. I'm talking about education. From being full to now a seven- or eight-year waiting list. Mm. I'm talking about kids still trying to get in there. They in their second year somewhere else, still trying to get into Bama. They, until you understand the power of sports yeah. and what it can do for your university and respect that, not hate that, you're going to be waiting for the next Dion. Mm. That's why everybody's upset. Ooh. I like when you say it with your chest, Nate, dog. Yeah, man. Can, can I ask you a series of yes or no questions? Yes, you can. All right, I'm going to ask you a series of yes or no questions. No, you can. All right, because you, you know. Yes, you can. <laughs> you know, no, you can. You know, no, you know no, Dion no. better than anybody out there talking right. about him right now. Okay. Yes. And this is why y'all need to listen to us, because yeah. Yeah, we got, got inside scoop. Um, was Deion Sanders committed to Jackson State? Was he committed? Was he committed? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Okay. Did Deion Sanders turn around that university's uh, athletic program? Yes, he did. Okay. Did Deion Sanders bring millions and millions and millions of dollars to that university? Yes, he did. Okay. Yeah. Did... Deion Sanders bring college game day, which would have never even thought of coming to Jackson State, to the to that university. Yes, he did. Okay, okay. Did Deion Sanders carry out his obligations, contractual obligations, to that university? Yes, he did. Okay. Did Deion Sanders donate money to the university from his own salary? Yes, he did. Okay. So people are mad. Because he did everything that he said he was going to do. And it wasn't long enough for them. It wasn't the duration that they wanted. It wasn't the extended period of time that they would have liked it. Even though he signed a contract, said, I'm going to be here for, for this many years. Y'all going to pay me this amount of money. I'm going to do this to the program. We're going to win games. We're going to win championships. We do everything that he said he was going to do. Those boxes got checked. And when he decides to go and take another opportunity... People are mad. The, you know, we had one of the guys that we work with say, man, I, I like what Dion did. He said, but I'm a little upset. He, say, he said he was going to stay with those kids and he was going to, you know, take these kids to the pros. And so I said, you ever heard of Shaquille Leonard? Remember that? I said, you ever heard of Shaquille Leonard? He said, yeah, you know. I said, you know what school he went to? They said, no. I said, he went to South Carolina State. 
I say the Colts. He was on one of the top linebackers in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Played for the Colts, but he's yeah. injured. He's like, yeah, yeah. I said, tell me the name of his coach at South Carolina State. Oh, I don't know. I said, well, I played mm-hmm. at Fam. Tell me my coach. I like brother. You in there? You know better. Yeah. Coaches can put you in position, mm-hmm. but only you as the player absolutely can excel absolutely at that position. Yeah. No, no, coach. A coach can help, can put you. In. Al Harris, great as he was at Green Bay, he only gives his players a, hey man, this is what you can expect. This is the best position we can put you in. Yep. Now it's up to you, Trayvon Diggs, to get that interception. So you can lead a horse or a water. Yeah. Yes, but you can't make him drink. And so, and he took four or five guys. Yeah. Those are guys that he looked in the eyes and looked in their mom and dad eyes yep. and said, are they guardian? And said, if I go anywhere, I'm taking your kid with me. Yep. He did that. Yeah. So I, I tell people like Ray, it's two or three people you can't attack with me. Yeah. And because you'll hear me get quiet and say, you ain't gonna let you attack Dion. Yep. I ain't gonna let you attack LeBron James. Yep. <laughs> and I ain't gonna let you attack Mr. Jones. Yep. In, unless you're an insider. Yeah. Like me and you yeah, are insider. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when y'all when y'all say something, I'm kind of looking. Yeah. But you notice I never really yeah, yeah. Never, go never back always. at yeah. folks. Now I don't see, I don't care what you think of me. Yeah. And how you feel about me. Yep. Nope. But people that I know personally, yeah. and I've seen what they've done for the masses. Yeah. Not just individuals. Yep. When I've seen he paid off people mortgage, mm-hmm. Dion don't talk about that. When he pays off people mortgages out of nowhere, when he goes to, when we played together every Tuesday, he used to track me down. Hey, man, we got to go to a local high school, a local black high school. Mm-hmm. To get back. And then when he stopped doing that, he started going to the elderly old folks' home. Yeah. I mean, every Tuesday. Yeah. You're, so off, when, you're off day. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, Dion, you. Man, can I tell the media? Nah, nah, dog. This is what I'm doing out of my heart. Mm-hmm. So when people need help, he helping these people. Uh-huh. So you, you ain't even, I ain't even let you attack Dion. Absolutely. Now you, he, he's arrogant. Mm-hmm. He's Dion. You know, I asked him, I said, Dion, do you got to show out and everything? He said, that, that helps me recruit, Nate. They ain't, they ain't coming here to Jackson State because we have the greatest facilities. They come and call Coach Prime here. Mm-hmm. So... You can't. He, know, he lose. knows his worth. Yeah, you can't lose who you, you are. are. Yeah. You know, so uh, if you are so, this is what's amazing. If you are so excited about Deion Sanders, they played a championship game last week against Southern, and Southern didn't even want to pack their side. Well, they all went to the Bayou Classic the week before. Well, your team just coming to play the championship game the week after. Why you ain't filling it up? Mm-hmm. We, you know, we can talk. Yeah, we can talk, but you got to do the right thing. You have to do the right thing. Absolutely. But anyway, anything else you want to know about my boy Prime? Nah, man, I just wanted the people to hear from you know from you. <laughs> yeah, <man. clears throat> I'm defending him. I agree. Yeah. I don't. I don't disagree. And, yeah. You know, if everybody out there has something to say about <clears throat> these kids or all the these kids on came there thinking that they're going to be with him, I don't think he ever told them kids he's going to be there the whole time. <laughs> nah, no, nah, he didn't. I man. don't think he ever told them kids. Nah, that. they understood what his contractual obligation was. They knew where he was at. That's all public information. I, I, and what got me was when he first went to Jackson. When he first set foot on that campus, within two weeks. And he was there permanently. I went and visited. I, I went and I just popped up on him. That's yeah. what I do. You know me. Yeah, I know you. I just popped up on him. Yeah. And he, and, well, were you, I, look, we, we clowning. I ain't yeah. going to tell you what yeah, we yeah, saying. Yeah, we yeah. clowning. Then all of a sudden, he disappeared for about five minutes. And I'm like, why are you crying? You know, I'm caught, hey, Coach, uh, pretty Tony is one of his guys. Tony, yeah. Tony wait, wait, crying. Man, just check around. He around here somewhere doing something. I'm like, doing something? I go around the corner, and he back there up on about five or six big old huge boxes, counting stuff. I said, Prime, what you doing? Well, I got to, you know, I took the job, so I got to get this stuff stacked up. Prime, that's a quick. He said, nah, 
Nate, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. So I got to be the equipment man. When the equipment man ain't here, I got to be in the training room. Yeah. When, it, when the, when it, when it, you know, with, it. With the, he went from the bottom yeah. to the top. Now tell me, I bet you Nick Saban ain't never went in there and separated now, Judge. There's no, nothing beneath him. Yeah. Yep. So he did <clears> what he <throat> had to do. I, I totally agree. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm going to say this with my chest before we get off the air, Nate. Right. Now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm glad he elevated that university. Right. I'm glad he elevated the HBCU platform. Right. I'm, I'm glad he brought notoriety. He brought worth and value to all the universities that right. are in, the, in that division. Um, and I'm glad that he has an opportunity to go coach at what they consider, you know, Power Five or whatever, right, over yeah. at Colorado. Uh, but I am going to say it's really unfortunate. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know what you meant to say. That I'm gonna have to sit up here and cheer against your boy, <laughs> 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 because for the next five years or whatever he signed for, right, right. University of Washington gonna be That's smacking right. up the doggone Buffalo <laughs> every <laughs> single time okay. he want to line up against him. Dang. Because you can be Coach Prime. Yeah, but you can't make your players prime time. You now, understand oh, what I'm saying? Oh, oh, oh. And that's, that's what I'm gonna say on this last episode. I'm gonna tell you. Uh, let me tell you, <laughs> you something. Saw we'll catch prime, y'all next I got time. it in here. We got this on tape, Prime. We rock and roll that U Dub thing. <laughs> we see the y'all next purple. time. Go. Yeah, yeah.